body fluid is divided into two parts. Part number one is the intracellular fluid. The intracellular fluid is mainly inside the cells and it is composed of 60% of the total body water which comes about 28 liters and it is rich in several solutes for example potassium, magnesium, phosphate and protein. In comparison to the second part which is the extracellular fluid which is the fluid mainly outside the cells and it is 40% of the total body water. The extracellular fluid has two parts. The first part which is the interstitial fluid which is three-fourths of the extracellular fluid and this is the fluid that is mainly occupying the space in between the cells. The second part for the extracellular fluid is the intravascular fluid which is one-fourth of the total extracellular fluid. And intravascular fluid is in the blood vessel where there is a plasma. And intravascular fluid is rich in several solutes, for example, sodium chloride and bicarbonate. Even though it's composed of three main solutes, sodium is actually the main solute that determine how water is moved from the intravascular fluid to interstitial fluid and vice versa. And this comes to the fact for oncotic pressure, which is the determination for how water is being distributed between these two parts. And water always follows when there is a higher concentration of solute. For example, if we have higher concentration of solute in the intravascular fluid, what's going to happen over time is that water will be moving to the intravascular fluid. And vice versa, if there is a higher concentration of solute in the interstitial fluid, water will be moving out from the intravascular fluid to the interstitial fluid. And this is all depending on the osmolarity. Osmolarity is basically the concentration of solute per liter, so it's based on the volume. So if we're having a higher osmolarity, which means is that we're having a higher amount of solute concentration. So if you're having a higher osmolarity over here, so we're having a higher concentration of solute. Therefore, water will be mainly in the intravascular fluid which means there will be higher in comparison to the interstitial fluid. So we can always say that higher osmolarity in the intravascular fluid equals higher oncotic pressure in the intravascular fluid. So the differences between osmolarity and oncotic pressure is that osmolarity comes into two parts. There are two parts composed in the osmolarity, which is first part is the solute and the second part is the protein. In comparison to the oncotic pressure, it's mainly composed of protein. And the main protein that is in the oncotic pressure is albumin. So let's take an example in understanding how water actually moving from the intravascular fluid to the interstitial fluid. So a disease state, let's say somebody comes in and um, they're having a cirrhosis. A cirrhosis is basically they're having a liver damage. And knowing that albumin is made in the liver, so when somebody comes in and they're having a, a liver damage, that means albumin is not being made. So if we don't have albumin in the intravascular fluid, that means there is low amount of albumin, therefore there is low amount of oncotic pressure. Also, what does this mean is that because we're having a low amount of albumin over here in the intravascular fluid, this means that we're having a low concentration of solutes overall in the intravascular fluid. And we just explained that water follows solute. So if we're having a low concentration in the intravascular fluid, that means water will actually move from the intravascular fluid to the interstitial fluid due to the higher amount of concentration in the interstitial fluid in comparison to the intravascular fluid. So now moving from the oncotic pressure and how water moves in between the two parts of the extracellular fluid, to the comparison between asmolality versus asmolarity versus tonicity. 
So osmolality is basically used for helping in diagnosing patient. So for example, if patient have diabetes, dehydration or shock, osmolality can help in diagnosing patient because it's the number of particles per kilogram. So osmoles per kilogram. And the main solutes in the osmolality, they are sodium, glucose, and urea. So if you were to calculate the osmolality for a patient, you would need to take their number of sodium mole equivalent per liter, multiply that by two, plus the number of glucose milligram per deciliter divided by 18, plus the blood urea nitrogen divided by 2.8 milligram per deciliter. And the normal serum, which is in the range of 277 to 297 osmoles per kilogram, this tells you, will help you determine in, uh, the patient if they're having a higher amount of solute concentration or lower. So in any case, if we're having, let's say, higher than 300 osmoles per kilogram, they're having a higher concentration of solutes in the body. And vice versa, they're having lower than 277 or let's say 250. This means they're having a lower concentration of solutes in the body. In comparison to the osmolarity, which is the number of solutes per liter, so if you want to understand these, so osmolarity, it's always having the R over here. So, and this is per liter. In comparison to osmolarity, it's always based on the weight. So it's always based in kilogram. And the way osmolarity works is that it helps us determine which IV line the patient will be receiving. So a patient comes into the hospital and they're having some condition. And the physician orders certain types of medication for this patient and in the pharmacy they're making several IV bag. And the IV, IV bag contains several solutes, contain several medication inside. So what happens is that the amount of solutes they're calculated and if it's less than 900 osmoles per, per liter, then a peripheral line will be taken into consideration in that case. However, if the IV bag contains so much solute and so much combination of other medication and solute altogether, it comes about to be over 900 osmoles per liter, then the central IV line will be taken into consideration in that case. So, Comparison now moving on to tonicity, the comparison between osmolarity to tonicity. The difference is that tonicity is the comparison of osmolarities. So we're comparing osmolarity of a cell to the solution that is exposed to it. So we're having a cell and we're comparing this cell. So let's take this example. We have this cell over here and we're comparing this cell to the environment that is outside. So this outside environment, we're comparing it to the cell and where we're mainly comparing it, the concentration of solutes. So this concentration over here, we're comparing it to the concentration of solute inside the cell. So depending on which one is higher or if it's less or equal, water or fluid will be moving in and out. So tonicity has the three types. The first step is the hypotonic. Hypotonic means low to amount of tonicity, which mean, um, so before I jump in what hypotonic mean, let's have an understanding that whenever we're comparing the environment or whenever we're thinking about tonicity, we're always comparing the outside environment to the cell and not the other way around. So we're always comparing what is the outside to the inside. So if in case of hypotonic, there is a low tonicity, which means that the tonicity or amount of solutes outside the cell is less than what is the inside the cell. So what happened in this case, as I explained a bit ago, is that water is distributed based on the amount of 
or the concentration of solute. So in this case, having a higher amount of concentration of solute inside the cell, water will move from the outside to the inside of the cell. And when this happens, what happens over time is that the cell will expand and can be damaged. The isotonic is basically about the same. ISO means that tonicity is about the same. So there is no shift in the fluid. So the fluid from the outside to the inside is still happening. It doesn't mean that there is no fluid moving in the cell and outside the cell. However, the concentration of solutes inside and outside the cell is about the same. So there is no cell damage and there is no higher movement of fluids from the inside or from the outside. The third type is the hypertonic. Hypertonic means there is a higher tonicity. So hypertonic means there is a higher concentration. And like I said, we're always comparing the outside to the inside. So there is a higher concentration of solute outside in comparison to the inside. So since there is a higher concentration here on the outside, what's going to happen is that water will be moving from the inside the cell to the outside environment. So in such case, what happens is that the cell over time will, will shrink and will be damaged as well. Thank for watching. And if you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.